Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello, all you wonderful pet parents. Thank you for joining us again on the Pet Parenting Reset. And today's podcast, I am so excited for. We are talking about all things black cats and witches. This is the Halloween special, but I am even more excited for today's guest. She wears many hats, sometimes even a pointy black one. A lifelong cat lover and psychic, she has burnished her skills over many decades. At her blog, Cat Wisdom 101, she has educated cat lovers for the past 10 years. To help promote Black cat adoption, she founded Black Cat Awareness Month, which is celebrated every October. And she's the author of an award-winning book, Black Cats Tell All, True Tales and Inspiring Images. Equally adept at juggling tarot cards, creating visionary art, taking shamanic journeys while communicating with her two one-eyed cats, Layla is passionate about speaking about everything magical and feline. And I already gave it away, but if you don't already know, (laughs) we are joined today with Layla Morgan Wild. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jessica. I'm just so delighted to be here. Oh, I can't, I can't, I've been wanting to do this episode for so long and yeah, we're just going to chat and all of you out there, let me tell you, Layla is incredible. I have been following her on Clubhouse for quite some, I, I've been listening to her far longer than I've been <laughs> talking about <laughs> her, but I'm so honored to have the opportunity to bring her to you because she is so Oh, she just has so much incredible wisdom, whether you have a black cat or any other cat, um, they don't have to be black. She has so much great information for all of us out there. So definitely check out Cat Wisdom 101. But Layla, today we are talking about black cats and witches. And like I was telling you before, I am so fascinated by this and I have been doing a little bit of research on it. Um, but yeah, we're just going to start with, we're, we're just going to have like a fun little chat today um, and start with how black cats became a symbol of Halloween. Well, a few things actually, Um, but I do want to just uh, share. (laughs) I don't know if you're aware, but Halloween now is probably the biggest holiday After Christmas, Uh, it's a multi billion dollar industry. So, we didn't get to uh, doing this huge interest, you know, the way that we're decorating. I mean, you know, look at my little altar behind me. You know, I didn't always do that a few years ago. So, if we want to delve right into the roots, um, I think there isn't just one. So, you're asking kind of a you know, because of all the mythology, you know, mm-hmm. some say, oh, it's the Egyptians and it could be the ancient Greeks and it could be, you know, going back to the witch hunt uh, during the Middle Ages. Um, but if we want to get into myth, uh, the origin of the the familiar, uh, the magical um, assistant, if you will, to a witch would go back to uh, the Greek myth of Hecate. So she is the uh, the goddess, the Greek goddess of the moon and magic, and so um, so that particular story where you know one thing shape shifted into another thing, uh, so the servant got shape shifted into um, a black cat, and then that became Hecate's familiar. So that's kind of the roots of that. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot more complicated. Yeah. Then we bring in the whole the whole witches in terms of oh the the Middle Ages. Can I read you a short paragraph of my book that actually Ooh. explains Ooh. it? 
Absolutely. I would love yeah. that. Let, let me just quickly do this because a lot of people don't know because there's so much wrong information. Um, so this is from my book, Black Cats Tell All. And uh, so this is, yeah. So honestly, this is the fact, not the myth, not the fiction, not the fantasy. And so we can trace back the origins of Black Cat superstitions to the 13th of June, 1233. So at that time, there was the Pope uh, Gregory the Ninth, and he issued a papal bull. Um, that's an official church document, and it was titled "The Vox in Rama," and in it, it declared that black cats were an incarnation of Satan, and anyone possessing a black cat then could be associated with devil worship and witchcraft. So this public, formal, from the church uh, decree, that marked the beginning, not only of the Inquisition, um, that's that whole um, church-sanctioned heretic um, and witch hunts. And this was actually, <clears throat> and the, the directly right after that, uh, this, I don't know, I don't remember if he was actually a friend or he was some kind of associate because remember, in terms of the Catholic Church, uh, there was always a big um, financial or commercial aspect, including the whole witch hunt, which we could get into later. But anyway, so he appointed a formal inquisitor, so kind of a, um, a heretic or witch hunter. And so he was uh, a German fellow, uh, Conrad von Marburg. So he's a priest. And his job was to, um, you know, quell the growing numbers of the Cathars. That was a Christian sect, which were considered heretics. And so he's the guy, Marburg, discovered this cult in Germany, and they were called the Luciferians. And that was kind of like, from there, it just kind of spread like wildfire, as you know, kind of like bad news does, or, you know, when there's fear and, and all of that. So basically, uh, we can blame the Catholic Church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, read about that when I was doing a little bit of research for today's episode as well. And it was really interesting, because it started, like you said, with this decree on black cats being um, basically the devil incarnate, right? And like this massive game of telephone throughout um, the, the Catholic church to where all of these men who were going out and killing all of these black cats, they just kind of started killing all cats because this, you know, game of telephone was just getting distorted what was, what they were actually to do. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, you know, uh, mostly women, uh, again, not exclusively uh, women, um, but again, any kind of stereotype of, let's say, a woman that was um, um, single, older, um, maybe they kept cats, uh, but, you know, familiars can be dogs as well, um, particularly do uh, black dogs. Uh, but, you know, if you look at the tradition before we had... Um, you know, doctors, physicians, the, the way that we do now, uh, the the wise women, the herbalists, the healers, uh, they were usually the woman kind of of the village, uh, a healer. And those were the first ones that would be targeted because they had the magic. They had the, the ability to heal. They had the ability to, um, you know, do something that was separate from the church. Uh, they didn't need an intermediary of a church. They could go directly to source. Um, and that's a whole other thing in terms of, you know, the whole women and, and um, uh, empowerment and or lack thereof. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I think, you know, I think that ties in so much with the idea of uh, witches, right? The, the way that society, the society we live in stereotypes, which is, and what got me so interested in this was actually a question that Jay um, from the two crazy cat ladies asked me a couple of years ago now. And she yeah. wanted, we were just talking about 
why is it so taboo in society to be a crazy cat lady, right? And I really started thinking about it. And I really like that's where my Mm -hmm. heart went was to um, the this when when they just started the Salem witch or you know the witch trials and the Catholic Church really going after quote unquote witches, which were you know any woman really <laughs> exactly <laughs> and but you know and, and I, I'm not going to you know target the Catholic Church specifically sure. because then very closely after you know during this time then of course we had. Um, uh, the Lutherans and and then um, the Protestants and it was actually the Protestants or the, or the pilgrims right that came uh, across the ocean uh, mm-hmm. to settle uh, in in the U.S. Um, so again, whether it's Catholic or Protestant or whatever, yeah. um, but you know the uh, the actual the stuff that happened with Salem and the witch hunt here. Um, was kind of really limited. It's kind of amazing how um, in different parts of Europe and and the UK as well, uh, we had, you know, formal formal witch hunts and and all of that. How it just spread in our culture from a very small isolated incident is is kind of interesting as well. Um, And again, you know, where does anything come from in terms of a superstition or it, it comes from the fear of the unknown it comes from uh you know something that we're maybe afraid of and we're afraid of it because maybe we don't know anything about it right so um but i just find it so fascinating that we have the superstition but if you look back culturally it wasn't even in this country it wasn't it, it was kind of still a double-edged sword because, you know, you can look at old Halloween costumes going back to like the 1920s and it was, it was a lot more lighthearted than, and then it turned darker and darker, probably in the, maybe the sixties and the seventies where we have really that stereotypical, you know, you know, arch black cat and, you know, the glowing red eyes and that kind of really that um, more evil looking uh, thing. But now, are you noticing, and I've been really conscious of this, so we will still have, but if you look at even, and and this particular little pot holder I have, okay, this is, this is probably a copy of, uh, of, um, of some designs from the 1940s. Mm Mm-hmm. But look at this. This is this is kind of like friendly. Uh, there's nothing really, yeah, you know, really kind of nasty about it. Yeah. So that here we are. We're 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 really. Have you noticed though that I think we are getting less of the products that are um, stereotypically, you know, negative. But uh, I honestly, since I think Instagram has been huge, huge in dispelling a lot of the myths and also just creating a lot of the awareness. It's been phenomenal. So, so I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see what kind, what kind of things did you buy that were kind of black cat related, Jessica? So <laughs> you, like items? That yeah, are... like shopping. So you know what I have found is that I have a hard time finding uh, black cat items, but uh, Michael's, the craft store. Yes. They have a lot that is that more like vintage 40s cat. Mm-hmm. A lot of their decor, uh, their Halloween decor is, it, it revolves around that uh, like characterization, uh, which yeah, is yeah, like the much more lighthearted, uh, which I, I appreciate. <laughs> mm. But um, I think also as consumers, I think as, as we're getting more aware uh, you know, through social media, through all media, and particularly, you know, it's the younger demographic of new cat owners or pet parents, as we like to call them, mm-hmm. uh, the millennials. They are really instrumental in uh, not only um, sharing and spreading really the positive image of cats, all cats, about shelter adoption, about really good 
uh, health care, veterinary care, um, diet. Um, they're so, and they're the ones also that are, are certainly very into, into purchasing, you know, the products. So again, you know, it's supply and demand. So as, as our culture is embracing this idea that black cats are wonderful, uh, to adopt, I think we're making some inroads. I mean, we're still not there yet. Did you know that the reason why black cats are so prevalent in shelters is not necessarily because they're black. Hmm. I I know that black dogs and cats have a harder time getting adopted because it's harder to take a good picture of them, which is so crazy. That's a myth. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, know. I, mean, I mean, my God, I, you know, my black cat uh, Instagram account, Black Cats of IG. Mm -hmm. That's all we post are pictures of cats and they're all gorgeous and they're all like it's just pretty easy but in terms of the the cats or and I guess the dogs maybe it's different I don't know because um, I am so cat focused uh, the re yes they are a little slower to be adopted but it's because there's just more of them there's just like in terms of the population uh, and part of it is genetics uh, part of it is their entire history um, if we just would break down like the entire world and all the all the millions of cats in the world there's just more of them so so there's that as well um, I think definitely there is um, and I have not uh, been to a shelter recently but when I used to volunteer at a shelter uh, near where I live and that's really that was one of the reasons why I decided to um, do this book and do this project and and it was you know when you know something uh, you, you read about it maybe you see it somewhere but when it actually happens to you personally and you and it's in your face um, and that's what happened to me and you know, I just, I just said this today. I just cannot believe that, like, that there are people like that out there. But there are. So I'm there, and I overheard a couple. I was just doing something else. I was socializing the cats, and I overheard this couple um, who were looking for, obviously, for a new cat. And the person that was helping them showed this beautiful black cat. What about about what about this cat? And, and, in, and I was right there and, and then I got into the conversation. Yeah. Like, it's like, look, he's so playful and, and beautiful. And, and the woman turned to me and she said, uh, we don't want a black cat. And she kind of looked to her husband and it was like, and I, I well, why not? Oh, and, and then she just launched into a whole thing, you know, um, and she was, you could tell you she was really uncomfortable because, you know, most of the time when we have something that we are uh, prejudiced against and then we actually start talking about it, then you have to actually kind of go like, huh, well, why am I, I why am mm -hmm. I? There was a, that kind of inner conflict because she yeah. was just repeating something. Well, my mother said that they mm -hmm. would blah, 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 right? And right. I could see the source of it. Um, but there was no changing her mind. And, you know, with that same person now, with the awareness that we have, would she be different? Yeah, probably. So, uh, and after that, I'm going, oh, my goodness. I, I think I have to do something. And one thing led to another in, you know, I, I was blogging about Black Hat awareness really, like, almost 10 years ago. But in terms of doing something really formally because Black Hat Awareness uh, Month is now a formal holiday uh, came really, you know, around the time that my book came out in, in 2017. And, and it's just so it's just so heartening to see, um, you know, I mean, half the time, I don't get credit for it. I just see people, you know, they're, they're creating posters, or creating events, or they're, you know, sharing their cats and like, I don't care, whatever, just like, get the word out there. So. As long as it's positive, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, I think we've really made, you know, inroads. I mean, we've got a way to way to go, but we're, we're getting there.
Yeah. And gosh, my mind was just like pinging all over the place with everything you were saying. But I, um, I did have one quick story that I hadn't thought of in so long, but you were talking about there are just simply more black cats out there. Um, I got into all of this <laughs> by doing TNR in my community. And while I went to many different feral colonies and helped trap, I had my own colony at my house. And very interestingly, they were all literally like there were 12 or 13, depending, you know, some mm -hmm. of them would kind of wander um, 12 or 13. All of them were black. All of them. All of them. Every last one. Wow. And I loved Look, I loved them so much. When I married my husband, I actually relocated them with me, which was an undertaking, but very successful. And um, so I had this colony for many, many years. They, you know, just kind of slowly over time, you know, one wouldn't show up and then another wouldn't show up. I wound up with two left when we moved to California. I said, you know what? You guys are coming inside whether you like it or not. <laughs> And they wow. did, and I still have one of them um, who is, he just rules the roost, honestly. <laughs> but <laughs> I've had many, many black cats, I can say, have owned me over my life. And I just, I, I have a special place in my heart for them. And I never realized it. It wasn't like I set out to have black cats. I just, yeah. I don't know if they're attracted to me or what, but. Um, well, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I think it's interesting because um, the per uh, there was another uh, person who also inspired me, uh, who also had a colony of black cats, uh, or maybe not 100%, but just about 100%. And she had this very, very old uh, black cat, um, kind of the patriarch of the colony, and his name was Punchy, and she... Um, she was a follower of my blog and she she sent in the story one day and I was just so moved by it. Um, and that actually, that if I didn't have enough reason uh, to do the project, uh, that, that really got me going. And uh, uh, he's not with us anymore, but he lived to a very ripe old age. And um, his, his story is in my book as well. And um, so, yeah, that, the, that really, oh, by the way, you know, my, my very first cat, my very first cat was black as well. And that was such a sad story because, you know, as a, as an empath, I, I mean, I've been, you know, a, a, an intuitive all my life. Um, I was very young, probably a preschooler and I really wanted a cat. And, uh, I had my very first, my very first book was a cat book. Um, and, and and that that started, you know. So I was begging for a cat, and so my parents brought home uh, a little uh, a little um, black kitten that I named Smokey. And at that point, um, my parents had never had a pet before, let alone a cat. They had no clue how to take care of it, what was involved, and very quickly um, they decided. Uh, that this isn't going to work and they brought the kitten to a neighbor and that and I, I went down there it was just it was just to this day it's heartbreaking because I knew what was going to happen and uh that they just took the cat as a mouser and it was this dusty mm -hmm. old basement and that's where that cat was going to live. And I just, yeah. oh, I just, I never, I never forgot. It. So, uh, and it took me a while. I, I mean, I had another, obviously I have a long history of cats, but I didn't have one for a few years. It was really, really heartbroken. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was smoky. Oh my God. I'm like cheering. I'm just thinking. I, about yeah, it. I, I know. It's making me feel, well, wow, all the feels. <laughs> too. Yeah, because you know what? It's, it's, you know, when we look at everything that we do, uh, whether we do like you, the TNR, whether you're, you know, writing or, you know, podcasting or, you know, whatever we're doing, um, there's such an overlap between, uh, I mean, certainly for me, I've done so many different things in my life, but the cats were kind of always weirdly a part of it. Mm 
So, you know, even, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, let's say in art college and, you know, I'm, you know, studying to be an interior designer and somehow the cats were still there. And then when I was teaching aromatherapy and I had my own school and my cats were always in the, in the classroom. I mean, it was, it's just always been that way. And then I founded, of course, a, a, um, a cat rescue uh, in Canada uh, that um, um, still happily uh, goes on without me. And that was 23 years ago. Wow. Uh, that's the Annex Cat Rescue in Toronto. They do very, very wow. good work. And that happened again. You know, like, you know, have you ever thought about why you're thinking, mm, why am I attracting these cats? You know, what, what is it about this, right? It, it, but it's like, to me, it's like there's that kind of innate, maybe interest, maybe it's a past life thing, probably. Uh, but then there's always something just happens. There's always that kind of, you know, they kind of just show up. Uh, and, and certainly where I was living, um, there was a very small colony uh, behind the house. And I started Again, I th this was 24 years ago. Like I knew nothing, <laughs> nothing about cat rescue. Um, but I, it's like what, whatever, they're there. Let me go feed them. I made a little shelter, and you know. And then, uh, and I had to move. And then I thought, well, who's going to take care of these cats? Right. And so uh, I just reached out to my local little. This is pre-internet, Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I reached out to my local um, little newspaper and I said, uh, does anybody want to um, feed these cats? Uh, you know, I, or, or start some kind of a little group or organization that we could, you know, do something. And they published it with my address and phone number. Um, and the next day the doorbell rings and i open the door and there's this young woman on a bicycle and she hands me a hundred dollar bill and she said this is for the cats and no. you know and i know someone we can like we can help you <laughs> so that hundred dollars started my cat rescue you know which is um um, you know, I've done done very well. And yeah, so what happened is we just, a little group of us, we started meeting in my living room and started organizing. We start to, we, we'd sew little catnip toys and, you know, we'd put them into, into the little, you know, um, pet supply, whatever stores, and they'd sell them. And I uh, started collecting funds, doing, I did a lot of different fundraising events and then suddenly the group grew and then, you know, and then that original colony of course was fed and then it just spread out and spread out and spread out and, and here we are. And that's, that's all it is. Funny. One person, one action, mm -hmm. like, really it was like one small action that I took and that was it. So. Yeah, such a huge ripple effect, right? Amazing. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I have a lot of um, a lot of those stories from my childhood, too, where I'm like, oh, my gosh, with with animals specifically um, that were supposed to be supposed to be pets. And I honestly, anytime I think about it, I always redirect myself and I say, you know what, that happened so that I'm a better person today that happened so that I can educate others today. And like, that's kind of how I absolutely because you know what we didn't know and our right. parents didn't know mm -hmm. you know yeah. I, you know i know we just you know when we know better we do better so so absolutely exactly. oh my yeah. gosh i know i say that all the time and i'm like i'm saying that too much <laughs> <laughs> we can blame oprah for that one yeah. well i had and these are like all of my notes that i took for <laughs> when i was <laughs> prep for today um, oh sorry i have not been speaking in short sound no, bites today no, it's it. totally fine i i always enjoy whatever tangent you go on i always enjoy it because it always does come back to um it always comes back to the cats somehow which is the most important part uh i did want to i, I felt called to say this and i don't talk about this 
I have not talked about this at all on my podcast. Um, in fact, the only place I have talked about it is on my Patreon because we are we have a, I have a very safe sp- space there with my Patreon family. But um, I know that you will know exactly what I'm talking about. I have had my remaining black cat. His name is Romeo. I've had a lot of issues with him. And I have talked to quite a few animal communicators um, who, who have tapped into him and uh, you know, professional readings and people on Clubhouse, and th- they all say the same thing, that pretty much that he chose me and that um, he was he was very special in a past life. One person even said he was a king in a past life. And he just expects to be waited on hand and foot, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but tell me, so then uh, what are the issues? Uh, well, he um, he started spraying a number of years ago, and uh, I have I've been managing that. I was not managing it well at first. Let me tell you, I had many many nights where I was just bawling in tears, cleaning up because I'm like, I don't understand why do, why are we continue? You know, after many many vet visits and constant yeah. blood panels and you know all the all the things that my Western brain right says to right. do. Um, and uh, we're managing very, very well, actually, with um, positive reinforcement. He gets a treat when he goes and uses the litter box. So we're doing very well with that. But he is a bully to my female cat. And that's basically what a lot of the um, animal community, the first one that I, you know, professional that I hired, um, she was the first one to tell me he just doesn't like female cats, like period full stop in a story. So uh, we, we've been working on that a lot lately. <laughs> it, uh, did, you, did you try the uh, flower essences? I've tried flower essences, a few, I, I haven't gotten the brand, uh, green green something that you- Honestly, uh-huh. try it, they're really awesome. Uh, but I can definitely also suggest a few other things. Um, yeah, the, the thing when there is that kind of hierarchy, um, because usually in a multi-cat household, it's going to be the female cat that rules the roost. So if you have a male cat like Romeo, who doesn't want that, um, that is going to create uh, the issue. But I think uh, is he still is he still spraying? Very rarely. Okay. Good. Um, very very rarely. And what's really interesting to me is that everything about this contradicts what my Western brain knows, right? Mm-hmm. My, mm-hmm. my don't, don't assign human emotions to your animals. And, you know, cats never do anything out of spite or, you know what I mean? Like, that's how exactly they're not jealous. They're not, you know, right. That's how our Western that. brain thinks. And when I really put it into perspective with everything, the animal communicators um, and, and energy healers have told me uh, it makes so much, he, he, when he, when I'm not paying attention to him in as quick a fashion as he likes, he walks over to wherever I am and he will spray. And this is very, very rare oh, because yeah. I, I really wait on him hand and foot, let me tell you. But um, he, he does get very like antsy with me sometimes. And, and like I said, my Western brain is like, I'm assigning a human emotion to him. But the other part of me, the more like, energy i i we're we're one i feel you kind of part of me is like no i'm i'm not i'm not addressing his needs in as quick a fashion or maybe even the appropriate fashion that he is expecting me to (laughs) but but have you just asked asked him like you know in that particular instance like what do you want yeah i so my issue really, it, it's me. Um, I talk to him a lot and I explain things to him a lot, but I have a hard time hearing him. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I, that's the part of myself I'm trying to work on. Okay. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I think you were probably in one of the rooms where I, I was talking about my cat Nunu who was a hoarder rescue um, with one eye and was very traumatized. And I could not, it would be like tuning into um, a radio station and it's all like 
rattly and I, I couldn't, I couldn't listen to her to hear what she was saying. And it was only when uh, there was one animal communicator that finally got through, she had a hard time getting through to her. And she's been, she's probably worked on 20,000 uh, cats in her life. And she go, oh boy, like, and so she explained everything. And once that happened, then I was able to kind of fine tune like to the radio station <laughs> where she was. And then the person I'm actually, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I have this amazing panel of animal communicators at my, my room on Monday. And so I've been working with one of them and we have really made big progress. So, uh, so I'm able now to communicate with her in a way that I couldn't, I needed that kind of conduit. And so maybe that's also for you. Uh, uh, and, and again, I can't explain exactly how it happened, but we'll, we can certainly talk about this another day. Sure. So for you to just fine tune that kind of, um, you know, to, to, uh, cause I, again, everyone will take in that information, you know, is it, you know, is it verbal? Is it auditory? Um, you know, kinesthetic or what have you. So, but when you do hear Romeo talk, how did, how, how, how does that appear to you? So he is very intentional. He stares at me. I mean, just eye to eye. And he has this like glare and really the, the m most that I get from him more than anything is just, this is what I want why aren't you doing it? You know what I mean? Like, but how do you know what that is? If he's, if, yeah. if, okay. So he's looking at you or glaring at you mm -hmm. uh, intently. And so something, there has to be something between that and then the object that he wants, you know, whether is mm -hmm. it, is it, uh, so let's say he wants a treat. Mm -hmm. So, where's the disconnect between the looking at you he is sending you a message and then you're not getting is it the treat is it something else like is so it a lot of the times when i'm really like i i feel him staring at me it's because i'm paying attention to another cat he doesn't oh, like okay. it okay that's he another wants, story wants, mm -hmm. it's him it's him or nothing and, and it's, 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 it's a thing. And I have to say, I'm, I'm quite gun shy at the moment with, um, hiring any, anyone else, uh, because I, the people that I have hired so far who have been absolutely wonderful and I love them to death. Um, I don't know if it's them or if it's that he just doesn't like his energy messed with, but anytime somebody tunes into him, he, he goes around and sprays constantly. Oh, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. That's really unusual. He doesn't like his energy messed with. Yeah. Wow. Very, very okay. controlling and I'm sure probably insecure maybe, especially if the, the whole, you know, past life, maybe even King thing were to be true. That's a very, you know, that position is very, you know, I am, I am the greatest, the best and everything else just, you know, falls in my lap. And if, if something is out of place or not the way I want, then, you know, done with oh, you. <laughs> have, have you worked with any crystals? Yeah, I, I, not much. I have um, been doing some crystal therapy and some color therapy. Um, I will find him occasionally going and sitting by his crystals. I have at, off the top of my head, I, I believe I have an amethyst, an aquamarine, and a uh, turquoise for him. Uh, my feeling is to try some black stones. Um, black uh, obsidian, tourmaline. I'm working with actually black tourmaline for Nunu right now. She's mm -hmm. having some OCD behavior. Mm -hmm. So it does work on a lot of um, uh, behavioral uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Certainly worth a try. See how he just responds. Do you have any in the house? No, I don't, but I can find some. Um, yeah. yeah, I can try any of the black stones. 
yeah, I've been trying to do color therapy for him as well. And he is very avoidant. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm not surprised therapy. about that. That might be just a little too invasive. Uh, but I would, I would try the black. And again, um, because it has that kind of absorbent quality. And again, mm -hmm. depending on which which one, you know, um, I'm kind of leaning towards the, the tourmaline. You just mm -hmm. get a nice chunk of it. Uh, and just see how he responds. Uh, and I'm just thinking, you know, um, definitely I'd be happy to, you know, take a look at him and <laughs> see see <laughs> what, what I'm picking up. Uh, but yeah, he's, but again, you know, when when a cat does any kind of behavior and they get a certain response from us mm -hmm. then we are actually training them so it's the yes. same way that you know they're doing what um we don't want them to do and we respond it's like no 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 don't do that but, but, but. you're yelling whatever you know that kind of thing absolutely uh as you know um is still a response and it's yes. like, oh, I'm getting attention. Uh, <laughs> but if it's something in this case, I'm just thinking, how, how could we do this differently? Um, I feel like, and, and I know this has been going on for a long time. I feel like there's just a missing piece here. And it's sort of like, you know, when I was struggling so much with Nunu and it was like, oh my God, it's like, you know, like, I know how to do this. Why, why am I struggling so much? And mm -hmm. it was this kind of little missing piece of um, an energetic piece. Oh, my God, I just got it. Uh, I just got it. Have you, have you cut any energetic cords between Romeo and another life? No. Because that's what happened uh, with with uh, this was just a few weeks ago, uh, where and I never even thought to do it. There were more than one. I don't know, maybe a dozen cords between my cat and the hoarder, who was probably bipolar, mm -hmm. and was still energetically tapping into her energy. Oh my goodness. I know. I never even thought to do that. So, and I can't believe I just thought of it right now. It was like, because it's just not something that we usually think about. Yeah. So that That's might be a start. Um, mm -hmm. And then getting into even things like the Akashic Records. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's just... <sighs> If, if they're just it's, so one that one little piece will then just shift and open everything else it's sort of like like a domino effect um, yeah and you know it's not even about for me his sprain i mean occasionally it is don't get me wrong because i yeah. break down but um it's about him being happy that's where I'm just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, and again, there are some cats that either um, want to be solo cats, mm -hmm. they want to be the only cat, or um, they want just who they want. How, do, how does, um, but you have a dog, don't you? So, how, how does he do? How does he get yeah. on? So, my dog actually and my cats are separate. Um, my husband is allergic to my cats, so I have a whole room set up for them um with their cat trees and i have windows and it, it's it's a whole it's a whole thing they have their own like house <laughs> mm -hmm. connected to our house um my dog will go out there with me and for the most part um my cats ignore her um Remia will occasionally like kind of follow her around um he's the only one that will do that but he's he's just like hmm who are you? And then so, so sort of just mildly curious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but not threatened at all. No. And mm -hmm. it's not eliciting any bullying behavior. No. Um, no. That might actually be something to encourage to see mm -hmm. if their bond uh, could be strengthened because then 
somehow one might help the other in terms of communication. That's very interesting. Yeah. I haven't thought you much know, about that. Something to explore. It's just, um, you know, it never ends. You know, everyone who does, you know, behavioral work or training or animal communication, whatever, I think we're just always, always learning. And uh, for me, it's just, I just stay wide open. Even if when I think, ah, oh, well, that's the way I kind of, yeah, that's the way it always works. That's, you know, that's worked in the past. That's really a good, you know, uh, protocol. And then something will happen out of the blue. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cord cutting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, so why not? Exactly. I mean, cats are an incredible energetic beings. I mean, uh, and then when you have a cat like Romeo, who's, you know, He's a very special energetic being, right? So, yes. and that's why he's <laughs> sensitive to, to you know, uh, how is he when you just pet him? Does he have like any favorite spots? He does. He really, um, he, surprisingly, like right, oh, right on the top of his head and under his chin are his absolute favorites. He doesn't like me touching his tail at all. Um, that's his sensitive spot. For anywhere sure. like the base of the tail or the, the the tip of the tail any anywhere in particular mostly the base of the tail yeah yeah but you know there's a chakra there yeah so he might need some some uh some yeah. chakra balancing Balance. well you know what i've been doing lately um uh do you ever uh work with any of the um you know uh binaural um um, frequencies, the right frequencies. So these are um, uh, these are sound frequencies that um, some people will add uh, music to it to the sounds, and they are amazing. Yeah. So there are ones even for balancing chakras. There are ones for um, specifically for pets, but I will often just play just regular ones, whether it might be uh, just something for calming, let's say, um, any kind of physical uh, issue. Uh, like I had a, he a headache the other day, so I put that on and uh, they, they, work, they work really well and animals are actually quite responsive to them. Now, ideally for humans, you, you know, you've got your, your, um, your headphone on because it, it is kind of left brain, right brain uh, for, the, for the hearing. But oh, even, even without, obviously your, our, our dogs and cats are not gonna wear headphones, <laughs> but even if it's just, you know, playing, you know, in the background, um, that might be something to explore as well. And I'm just feeling there's like something really off with his base chakra into the first to the second, which would also be, of course, the urinary bladder. Uh, Interesting. All of that. Um, so worth a try absolutely you yeah, can just go definitely. and google on youtube they're great it's free um chakra balancing whatever um the colors usually will go on and they'll shift or whatever you can look at them or not look at them it doesn't matter because it's just going to be about the sound um it's worth a shot yeah i've been wanting to do that for myself lately too so i'm i'm very and we could we could do it together <laughs> yeah, you can absolutely do it together and, and just notice, uh, notice his body language, notice um, particularly the tail, notice if there's something, you know, a little, a little twitching, a little uh, whatever, uh, and also notice, um, uh, uh, of course, the ears, uh, but particularly, I think, um, the whiskers. So just notice how he's how he's sitting, you know, or lying down, and mm -hmm. just really notice the um, when it goes from let's say one chakra to another. There'll usually be a little bit of a beat, uh, um, a pause, so you'll know uh, if you're not actually watching the screen, uh, you'll know it's gone, you know, from from uh, base chakra to to uh, uh, sacral and 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 so on. Uh, yeah, oh, boy, I'm really now. I'm really curious to see how that might be uh, a good, uh, <laughs> a, a good, uh, just an adjunct, whatever you know. 
Yeah, that's wonderful. I will definitely, I am definitely going to try the black tourmaline and the um, chakra balancing. And I will also look into the cord cutting. That interests me quite a bit. Um, you know, I, I don't think anything happens like just to, I think everything happens for a reason, <laughs> you know? And um, I, I was actually yeah. listening to a podcast this morning about a woman who uh, was hypnotized and found all these memories of a past life. And uh, it is, it, yeah, it, it's just so interesting. <laughs> oh, I have a theory because, you know, when I discovered uh, Clubhouse, oh goodness, it was, you know, during the winter and um, what else was there to do? Because we're like <laughs> inside, right? And I thought it was just, I, I fell in love with it so much that I, I don't hardly even do Facebook anymore and, or Twitter or whatever. And I have a theory that the little groups that get together, uh, that that we've connected to, um, on a on a, because I'll see the same people over and over again. Considering mm -hmm. there's like you know millions of people and I don't know how yeah. many thousands of different rooms going on literally every minute of the day, right? And those I see them as. Um, a kind of like a bit of a soul group that we have known each other before because I have already made um, friends that you know that are either my cohorts or you know I've done work with them um, you know uh, uh, my regular moderator Jackie in London mm -hmm. we FaceTime all the time I mean it's like you She's know and we're like friends and 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 you just know you just know there's that kind of um, uh, like, I mean, here we are, like, I, you know, it's like, we're just chatting. Like, yeah. <laughs> no. I, I, I don't, I, this is, I'm not in normal podcast mode at all. <laughs> I have to tell you my favorite, my yeah. favorite podcasts to listen to are either. I really like the like supernatural or crime junkie, but I also, I mean, I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast all the time and it, you never know what they're going to talk about. It doesn't matter what that person does for a living or you know what I mean? Like the book yeah. they just wrote, you have no idea what they're going to talk about. And it, I just, I love it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm thinking now I've been so slow to get on this. I mean, forget about YouTube. I mean, I hate YouTube. I hate, I mean, I hate video and I'm like, here I am. I'm like, oh my God, I have to be on the screen and I hate it. Aww. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm feeling like I need to teach again. I mean, my background um, in terms of uh, the metaphysics, um, everything, you know, spiritual. I mean, I, I was teaching 20 years ago. So, yeah. so, and I kind of, you know, fell off that thing and, you know, got into more of the cat thing. And now I really want to return back to, to teaching again. So I am thinking courses or um, it, it's, and now that I'm an elder, you know, I'm a crone. So <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. You know what? Do it. Yeah. Like, do it. And I, I mean, I have online courses. I, it's, and the wonderful thing about them is that they're ever. I mean, of course, you update them as necessary, but they're evergreen. You know, yeah, you absolutely. Put work and absolutely, amazing. yeah. Because I mean, you know, as as the whole topic of whether it's cats. Uh, or spirituality, or, uh, you know, all that just that self awareness um, um, topics that, you know, people are hungry for it. And, you know, there's so much information because you can find absolutely anything about anything. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, just go on TikTok and, and it's all there. But is it factual? Right. And is it, there's so much misinformation uh we have all these you know these these very young i don't know 20 something uh experts and gurus and whatever i'm like um hello where is your life experience so yeah. I, I am feeling a little bit of that obligation um to take uh to take my pretty vast vast and very very diverse history um to you know, share what I know. I mean, that's why I, I love to do the rooms that I do uh, on Clubhouse. So I think that's I think that's kind of prompting me to go. Okay, maybe I need to 
take this to a, a, a broader audience or a different audience. So. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here for it. Um, yeah, Jay and I, or I'm sorry, the two crazy cat ladies are just killing it on TikTok. And the wonderful thing about I them heard. Oh my God. Are, they, hold on. Are you on TikTok? Yeah. You are. Oh my God. Oh. I have thought about it, but I just don't know if I can handle another platform. But they right. are, they're awesome because they are. It's not that they're particularly. Um, um, expert or started out that way but they just made it so they um, just keep learning and they keep, keep learning and they share it and you know they're wonderful on camera mm -hmm. and i think it's also nice to have that that you know the thing it's hard to do even a, a podcast by yourself or it's nice to have that back and forth between you know another person mm -hmm. or having you know maybe um, animals in the background or, or what have you. So, yeah, I think, yeah, I really, um, I love the work that they do. Um, um yeah, yeah. we need that. We need, we need all the good information, uh, you know, the information that you're putting out and, um, we need all of it and yes. more of it. Yes. I agree. And actually Dr. Lloyd, Lori Kozier last night, um, said that I, I think they're going to all try to get together, especially, I don't know if you know Dr. Lori Kozier. She's an integrative veterinarian. And yeah, I, yeah, I do know her. Yeah, they are, they're going to get together and, and try to get some more veterinarians on board, which I don't think will be difficult, and just blast a PSA to get your cats off of kibble, um, if at all possible, even if it's just to yeah. a wet food, a canned food. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what, I wonder, um, but what about um, a sponsor that would be, you know, either a raw food uh, brand uh, as, as a sponsor? I think that would be wonderful. I know I would, um, I, a couple off the top of my head, I would reach out to. Um, yeah, I might, I might try to interject myself and see if I can find a <laughs> raw food yeah, Because, I mean, that's totally your jam, you know? Yeah, because it is like, well, and, and as Dr. Kozier was saying, she was because she still practices, um, you know, a lot of the vets that we follow online, they, they don't practice anymore. Um, yeah. They teach and which yeah. is wonderful and necessary, but um, she still practices and she's just like, it is devastating to me to see all of the disease and all of the harm, you know, just all of the pain these cats are going through. And it is, it is, it's avoidable. Pain. Yeah, a hundred percent avoidable, um, but it's with knowledge, right? Because there are some master marketers out there. <laughs> well, I Just mean, if you look at um, in my early days of blogging, I was not that fussy about who was sponsoring my posts. I did a lot of work um, with some of the biggest brands. I'm, I'm not going to name anybody. <laughs> But when you look at, um, and I used to write also for Pet Finder, and um, and and then at that point, and they they were acquired, whatever, by a brand. I would have to go through so much editing. I I I didn't deal with just one marketing agency or ad agency. Uh, I'd go through like several. The budgets that they have for doing, um, whether it's a TV commercial, uh, print, whatever, uh, it's mind boggling how mm -hmm. much money they're spending. And yeah. again, if you can get your message, no matter what the message is, to a large audience, and again, you know, everything's very targeted. So uh, that's why they make the profits that they make and continue to, to um, uh, to sell those products that, mm -hmm. uh, and again, I mean, you know that if you're dealing with uh, a breakdown of the ingredients of, let's say, kibble and a really good quality food, commercial quality food, not necessarily a homemade made right. food, you do a cost analysis. I don't know if you've done that. No. And that is why we still see kibble for sale because of yeah. the huge profit. 
Oh, huge profit. Yeah. Well, especially because they, a lot, a lot of them, I'm not going to say all of them because there are some companies out there that are trying really hard to do Absolutely. Better. Absolutely. And again, you know, the change, you know, in, in the 10 years that I've been blogging and, you know, and I've worked with probably every major brand, uh, but I've also consulted um, uh, privately as well. And I think we're making a little bit of progress. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe in another 10 years, I think we're going to see but it's slow. But you know, when we're talking about really changing an entire industry, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's, a, it, you know, when you look at the history, it's a new industry. I, yeah. you know, the idea of even a commercial pet food, mm -hmm. um, it's recent. Yeah. I mean, what is it, 50, 50, 60 years? Yeah. No, it, it is. It's very recent. And um, yeah, it's, gosh, I, I could talk for hours on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, same here. <laughs> talk for hours. But yeah, no, I think... Um, I don't even know how I got to Dr. Lori Kosher. But, uh, I, I, uh, um. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is this is just what we're doing. And, and, and what we're yeah. doing, actually, is a very intuitive, an intuitive flow that we are actually touching on everything that needs to be spoken of today. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, but yes, I would like to, I, I, I have gone over the time that I told you that I would need you for. So I definitely <laughs> want to be mindful of your schedule. Um, so I did, I was hoping to end with a positive note about yes. black cats. And I know that there are certain instances throughout history where black cats were actually considered good luck. So I thought maybe we could talk about that. Yeah, I, here's something I'd like to. Uh, did you know that a lot of black cats are polydactyl? I know. Yes, I and, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of um, um, a positive, a positive story because this is this is not really a myth. This is actually true. So uh, there is the um, idea that black cats are very lucky. Uh, for sailors mm -hmm. and, and pirates, for that matter, um, you know, the different the different people that would sail the seven seas and whatever. Uh, and um, the reason for that uh, was the black cats were often polydactyl, so they'd have those extra toes, and that would make them. Not only would they make them really excellent. Uh, mouse or rat, you know, vermin killers, but they also uh, were able to climb, you know, they have to climb up the ropes and the mast and, you know, all of that. Um, and so they could actually, um, um, you know, uh, hang on because, you know, you're, you're, th th these, these were ships without stabilizers. It was pretty rough going. Um, and um, so, yeah, there were actually more black cats. And then eventually they just thought, oh, these black cats, you know, were, were you know, the sailors would love them and, and away, and there we go. Awesome. Yes. I, um, yeah, there, there are a couple of, of instances throughout history, I think, uh, that being probably the most notable. Well, thank you so much. I can't tell you how wonderful it was to talk to you today, Layla. Um, and I do want to give you the opportunity to tell all of our listeners where they can find you for more, more information, more, more of everything, because I know I never get enough. Never get Absolutely. Enough. So um, my website, catwisdom101.com, uh, basically cat wisdom 101 across all social media platforms and my black one of course is black cats of ig and in that bio there's a, a hyperlink to everything that i'm up to including my new shop that i'm working on right now i'm so excited for it i've been working on merch as well um obviously not specifically black cat so i'm very I'm, I'm very excited to see the designs you come out with and we'll definitely be purchasing <laughs> yeah they're gonna be really really unlike anything you see on the market um uh, i'm calling it kind of the 
the alchemy of black cats. Ooh. You know, about how, you know, wearing something can be almost like a talisman or, you know, it has a, a transformational quality to it by, you know, just wearing it. So that's my uh, intention there. Oh, wonderful. I love that intention. And I love the idea of the intention, putting on a piece of clothing and, and you know, that, yeah, that's wonderful. Feeling different. I love that. Thank you so much. And for everyone listening, I will have all of Layla's information linked in the show notes. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and end today's podcast. And thank you so much for joining us. All of you wonderful pet parents. Remember, as Layla said at the beginning, when we know better, we do better. So I will go ahead and end the podcast with that. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you again, Layla. Oh, thank so you, honored, Jessica. So honored to have you here with us. So y'all have a wonderful rest of your week and give your dogs and cats some extra love from me and from Layla this week. Bye guys. Oh, oh, oh.